Welcome back to the Cartoon History Channel. This is the Cartoon History Channel YouTube. And this is Facts Friday 18. How the Hayes Code Changed Cartoons. For the best at the time, but really ultimately it was for the worst. Originally, American animation and American live action film had a bit more of an edge to it. When the Hayes Code was put into place, that lasted from the mid 30s. To the late 60s. It changed things like from Betty being a, a jazz flapper and a hot bit about town girl that goes around partying and the singing performer that she originally was. She was still the singer, but during the Hayes Code, she became a bit taller and a bit more human looking and became a uh, housewife type character. Though she was a single housewife type character because the character never married. Another example of the Hayes Code that you weren't allowed to do what would be considered taboo things, but to white people. There was a clause in it, no white slavery. I don't get that. But I, it was part of the time back then with the white supremacy. Basically, the Hayes Code was the predecessor to X-rated films, R, PG, G, and NC-17 type stuff. That, the MPAA, I mean, uh, the Motion Picture Rating Board people evolved out of the Hayes Code. But the original Hayes Code was very, very, very dark, and, and you couldn't hardly do anything in cartoon comedy anymore. Savory was one of the pushers of the element of the Hayes Code. He purposely did as much as he could to test the censors back then. Did you know in a swing, in a Red Hot Riding Hood, there is a, a shotgun wedding scene and there's a google image of it that tex avery even made himself the justice of the peace where riding hood is having the grandmother and the wolf get married and the wolf character is just a a parody of of an old man a wolf what was a term back then for a loose zoot suited party guy and that's why there's wolves in, in those red Red Hot Riding Hood tunes. The grandmother falls in love with the wolf, but in the original ending, instead of him shooting himself, he gets married to the grandmother in a, in a shot, a gunshot wedding, in a shotgun wedding. But that was edited out for the more Hayes Code related ending. Another example of silly Hayes Code stuff I was talking about. They were okay back then with someone committing suicide in an adult cartoon because the original cartoons of that era were made for the adults and the audience, not the kids. Then the shotgun wedding. The only people that got to see the original shotgun wedding ending was when it was done for the military. They got The military got a copy of the original ending. Another example of what the Hayes Code allowed that wouldn't be allowed today was the Centered Eleven, which was 11 racial t tension cartoons that parodied certain cultures of people, typically African American, but have since been banned from TV. You can find them, though, on the Looney Tunes. Um, uh, DVD sets. An example of Tex Avery poking fun at the Hayes Code was 1945's The Shooting of Dan Magoo, where the bartender is clearly implying to be blocking a risque picture of a woman laying in a similar pose to what Rose was laying in the Titanic when, when uh, Jack did the drawing. I mentioned Red Hot Riding Hood earlier. The drawing of Red Hot Riding Hood, which was her strip, not nightclub stripper name, because the cartoon started out as a normal 
Red Riding Hood, and then they fuss about it at the beginning, and then they redo it with a more urban contemporary, and then it becomes Red Hot Riding Hood. The Red Hot Riding Hood character of the Red Hot Riding Hood short in itself is a big tease-up to the Hays Code censors. How they got away with it during the Hays Code, I'll, I'll never understand. But Tex Avery was always trying to push the envelope and push the limits. Another interesting tidbit about the Hays Code is Tweety Bird was based on a one of those classic uh, but old-fashioned baby pictures of where you're on a rug, but you're in your birthday suit. Bob Clampett ha had of that a picture taken of that of, of him like just like that as a boy, his little baby, as a. And he based that drawing, um, that that picture of himself, on the original Tweety Bird. So he was originally a, a baby bird out of his egg, without any feathers. The Hayes Code deemed that nude, or naked, which he essentially was, and that's why he ended up with the yellow feathers. Another running gag, normally in cartoons today, is doing what they call a spit take. There were tobacco-chewing characters like crickets or grasshoppers or other things that were going to do a spit take, but the Hayes Code took those out. And they are, there are even gags about the Hays Code that reference things that they were going to do, but the Hays Code wouldn't let them do it. And they would say it in the gag, like, in Tale of Two Kitties, when he keeps saying, give me the bird, give me the bird, the uh, bigger cat says, if the Hays office would only let him, I would give him the bird, all right? If you like this video, remember to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. You can hit the notification bell for personalized videos, or you can hit the gray button where you know about all my videos. And that way you'll know about all my videos from Friday and Saturday at 3. I also have some other Cartoon History platforms. A Cartoon History Instagram, Channel 1, which is devoted to my TikTok. And a Cartoon History, Channel 2, which is the YouTube one. They're, they're, well, one's an Instagram channel one and one's another Instagram channel two. I also have a TikTok, the Cartoon History Channel TikTok. The links to, to all of that will be in the comments. So follow my social media Cartoon History stuff if you want more Cartoon History.